Well, hello there. Welcome into First Take on a Tuesday. Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, I'm Molly Karam. Gentlemen. What's up, man? Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you. How you doing? I might be a little Molly. excited today. Just a little bit. Well. Um, Robert De Niro. The man. The Bronx man. Tale, my favorite the movie man. of all time. Of all De Niro films, you bring up the Bronx, Bronx Tale. Tale. Listen, you say you Bronx Tale. You gotta check the door. Make I gotta sure tell you, you know, to me, and you know, what I, he's done obviously phenomenal work throughout his career, but stuff that he's done lately, I mean, just some of those movies that oh. you wouldn't think. You know, whether it's Meet the Fockers, Meet oh. the Parents, right. okay. this, Analyze, this and that. What? You two, between Rachel you Bell, two. But the intern, or, I mean, oh, the intern I mean, was wait, 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 wait. Was De Niro's here today. Silver You're Lime's talking a Bronx was so Tale, which is just fine. You're talking the intern. I'm just telling you. I mean, How about look, Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, The Godfather Part Two, Once Upon oh. a Time in America? I got Godfather it, I got Part it, Two. I got heat. Heat was good. Like, so heat many. was good. He he would over I thought Heat was a touch good. overrated to tell oh, really? stop wow. it. Tough wow. critic. Wow. Wow. I like what 1900. How do you like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's I can't talk to you right now. You said Heat was overrated. I can't talk to you right bit. now. Anyway. I can't talk to you right now. A little bit insulted okay. a little bit. <laughs> Whatever. We are Let's move so on. excited to have Robert De Niro here. He's going to talk about his new movie, Hands of Stone, so stay tuned for that. But we begin with the 88 Club. Madden 17 is out today. Des Bryant isn't happy with his rating of 90, according to the Dallas Morning News. I play Madden. I love Madden. They would do me like that. Oh my God, that is an insult. Like, why would you do that to me? How much I love y'all. Like, what? Not John Madden, because I love him. It's the developers. So the players are rated in more than 40 different categories and then put into a formula to predict how good they will be. So there are seven wide receivers, as you can see right here, ahead of Des in the ratings. Alshon, Larry, DeAndre Hopkins, AJ Green, ODB, Julio Jones and Antonio. Uh, I also want to point out Max Dez had a concussion yesterday in practice. Is Dez underrated? Glad you call him ODB, by the way. I do. I like Cause that. Because the old dirty people don't want to call him ODB. I know, no, it's I do. excellent. Right. Yes. Of course he's underrated. Mm -hmm. First of all, nine, if you watch Dez Bryant, if he's on the field and to a real quarterback is throwing him the ball, one of the reasons, Stephen A., he's so excited about Dak Prescott because he's sitting there going, boy, if Tony Romo's not on the field, at least another guy, I get behind the defense, he can get me the ball. Because Dez will get behind the defense. He, even when you cover Dez with a top corner, he can still get open. He's kind of always open. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's what separates the elite receivers from the 1A tier, right? They're like, you know, a, a bunch of really good receivers in the league. But Antonio Brown and Odell Beckham Jr. and Julio Jones and, yes, Dez Bryant, to me, are absolutely tier one. Even if I put him fourth in that tier, and Cowboys fans put him first, of course, because they're Cowboys fans, he is an elite wideout. And to have Larry Fitzgerald ahead of Des Bryant, that's just not common sense. Look, I know Fitzgerald's still a good fantasy receiver, and he's still a really good receiver, and he will be in the conversation for greatest hands in the history of the NFL. And the reports of his demise have been exaggerated over the last several seasons because he's still a really good NFL player, but he's basically a slot receiver. At this point in his career, he's a possession guy. He's running shallow and intermediate routes. He's not getting behind. He's not going, he's, you know, catching these big, big play catches. He's not a stretch vertical threat. That's just not Fitzgerald. Anymore. You can't really put him in the same category, category, let alone rated right ahead of Des Bryant. There's no team in the NFL where if both were available and healthy, they're taking Fitzgerald over Des Bryant at this point. I'll give you someone else. Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey, I would put in tier 1A. I mean, he's an excellent receiver. But again, you, it's not like Alshon Jeffrey's open no matter what. I know he was targeted more than anyone. Part of that's Brandon Marshall's not on the team anymore. But he, it's just the eyeball test. Watch Des. It's qualitatively different even than a guy like Alshon Jeffrey or Demarius Thomas or Emmanuel Sanders who are you know, both, I think, in that upper tier. But they, you just split targets on a team, all of a sudden, people don't perceive you the same way. But to put Fitzgerald, especially, but even also Alshon Jeffrey, ahead of Des Bryant, assuming health, is ridiculous. Des Bryant is an upper tier, first tier NFL receiver. And Fitzgerald, who's going to be in the Hall of Fame, I think, uh, I think he deserves to be mm -hmm. one day, is simply not that anymore. Antonio Brown. Julio Jones, automatically to me, are at the top of the list. You look at a DeAndre Hopkins, he deserves some love. Alshon Jeffrey needs to stay healthy. I have a problem with how low Des Bryant is rated. But let's not bloviate about him like he's the man, the myth, the legend. 
Let's be clear about something here. Obviously, he was hurt. But even before he was hurt last season, his best season was like 93 receptions. I'm looking at his numbers right now, uh, Max. His best season was 2013, 19, 93 receptions with 1,233 yards, even though he had 1,382 yards the year before in 2012. We're talking about Des Bryant, 92, 93 receptions. We're talking about an Antonio Brown, 128, 136. We're talking about a Julio Jones, 136. We're talking about a DeAndre Hopkins. That uh, Who was the quarterback last year? Brian Hoyer was throwing the football for the Houston Texans last year, and Lord knows how many others. The fact of the matter is you can't just look at numbers. You also have to look at potential in terms of what guys could do if, indeed, they had a quarterback. Because when Des Bryant was balling, he always had Tony Romo throwing him the football. Last year was the exception because Tony Romo was pretty much out. They were 1 and 11 without him. But if you look at Des Bryant, there have been some questions about his route running. There has been some questions about his intelligence on the football field in terms of, you know, a receiver knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it. I'm not speaking about this because I'm not qualified to judge Des Bryant that way. Let me be clear. But the NFL aficionados who have played the wide receiver position at a Hall of Fame level, whether it's a Chris Carter, whether it's a Jerry Rice, and the list goes on and on, okay? Or you got primetime Deion Sanders and others. You've got the playmaker Michael Irvin who actually absolutely loves Des Bryant. When you listen to people talk about him, there are some questions, and there's an amazing room for growth. They're looking at him right now, and they're saying, excuse me, what could he do? What could he bring to the table? Because there are some things that others have that he's lacking. Great hands. He's got good hands. Does he have great speed? No, he does not. Can he create separation like other guys? No, he cannot. The, diff the difference is he can catch the ball in coverage. Even when he's not open, it appears that he's open sometimes because he can go up and get it, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. But at the same time, there are things that he struggles to do. So when we look at it from that perspective, let's also take it consi into consideration this reality. Des Bryant has the luxury of having a massive offensive line, which is clearly the best in football, which made Darren McFadden look like an all-pro. Now you acquire Alfred Morris. You go out and draft Ezekiel Elliott. You're going to be running the football more effectively. Tony Romo is supposed to be healthy enough to quarterback for you. And when you look at it from that perspective, that opens a lot of things up for Des Bryant as well, that the others don't have at their disposal, whether it's because of Le'Veon Bell's suspension or the absence of a running game, particularly for the second half of the entire season for Julio Jones or DeAndre Hopkins, pretty much having to do it by his damn self because it's barely a running game because Arian Foster was out last year and there's no passing game because you don't have a quarterback and your offensive line was suspect too. All of these things people are working against, Des Bryant doesn't have to work against. So we have to take that into consideration as well when we're judging a wideout. I've got mad love and respect for Des Bryant. Um, when I'm talking about the Cowboys, I'm talking about their delusional, horrible, worst in American history fan base, okay? I'm not talking about the players themselves. But even if I were talking about the players, I certainly would not be talking about Des Bryant. I got mad love and respect for him. But when we talk, it don't sound like he should be top three. We don't know that yet. Larry Fitzgerald, yes, he four. moved to... Top yeah. four, I said. By the Larry. way, I forgot DeAndre Hopkins. Right. He absolutely deserves inclusion. Okay, no problem. Yep. But when we talk about the, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, moving to the slot is not, a, is not a small thing. I mean, we thought Larry Fitzgerald... Who do you want, was... Larry Fitzgerald or, or Des Bryant? It, and it depends on what you're asking them to do. Win. It depends on what you're asking them to do. You, well, 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 no wait. one is listening. Time, 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 time. You Larry are, Legend you, coming off a good season. You nor anyone else in America is in no position to use win as a category when you're mentioning the Cowboys. You do understand that, don't you? I'm talking about Des Bryant. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait I'm just saying. We, Des we, Bryant listen, is listen. a better receiver right now. You would, he, he, he should be absolute. I can't even believe this is a conversation. I don't think it's controversial. Des Bryant is better than Larry Fitzgerald right now. Larry Fitzgerald is a, was a great top-tier wideout, top three, top five throughout a lot of his career. He's moved into a second phase in his career where he still retained amazing value because of his hands, et cetera, et cetera. But, he's, but between but then, Larry Fitzgerald and Des Bryant, who's but, taking Fitzgerald? Well, no, 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 no. Nobody's taking Fitzgerald if you're talking about a wideout. But that is. Wait, wait a but if you're talking about versus, well, we disagree with it. That's, that's why we're having the discussion about it, because we don't agree with Madden. But let's be clear about something with Larry Alshon Fitzgerald. Alshon Jeffrey time, time or Des Bryant? Four years. Well, don't give me Alshon Jeffrey. Get healthy. Get healthy. Be on the field first, okay? But when we think about, um, what is it, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald yeah. let's think about this for a second. This guy was an elite wide receiver at one point in time in his career. Obviously, he lost a couple of steps. They moved him to the slot. 
that ability to transition to the slot. I don't think Dez can play the slot. Dez is, is considered somebody that runs a limited yeah. amount of routes. Sure. He doesn't. He's not considered somebody that can run just any route that has that level of versatility. Now, I'm not questioning, again, these are what the football aficionados sure. say. If you don't play on the field, you got to defer to them. I can watch you, but I'm also going to defer to experts. And this is what I heard. You know, doing NFL Sunday last year and knowing the cats in the business that I know, I'm talking about NFL players, okay, to guys that I talk to. They say, yo, Stephen A., this is what Des Bryant is. He's a bad boy. He got talent. We can't re – you got to respect, got to give him mad love and respect, but let's not act like he can just do anything. Des Bryant – is a limited route runner. He cannot play the slot. And by the way, his durability is now a question mark, which needs to be brought up as well. But to bring up guys, I know we agree about Fitzgerald, but to have him rated ahead of Dez, <clears throat> it's like a guy who can't play corner anymore. He okay. can still play safety very well, but then you've got a shutdown corner. Dez is a wide out, is the equivalent of a shutdown corner. Now, sometimes shutdown corners get criticized. Oh, they don't want to tackle guys. I mean, Dion got criticized for that. They don't want to tackle guys. They don't do this. You look at the X's and O's, et cetera. But the thing they can do, which is cover a guy, they can mm -hmm. do at such an elite level, they're still elite. Whatever you want to say about Dez, he is always open, and his ability to That's not true. He's not Dez always is, open. Because even when he's not open, you can throw the ball in his direction. Well, chances well, are well, he's well, coming well, down well, well, with well, it. Well, actually, you can't say chances are, because it's not 128 to 136 receptions. It's 92, 93, 88 receptions. That's number one. Number two, they're running the ball most of the time. Number three, you and I both know Jason Witten is a huge target in the interior. So if you've got him between the seams, okay, and you're throwing the ball to, you know, to, to Jason Witten, and you're running the ball effectively, and you've got all day. I mean, Tony Romo could stand back in the pocket, take pictures, call his wife, mm -hmm. check on the kids and all of this stuff before he throws a damn pass because that's how much protection he's getting from that offensive line. Des Bryant benefits from that. We haven't seen what I'm asking you to do, Max, yep. is this. Imagine Des Bryant playing with Houston with Brian Hoyer throwing him the football. Yeah, he would, Imagine he would, Des listen, Bryant he had struggles playing with Atlanta. Quarterback last year. Uh, there we here's go. My, here's there my we question. Go. We both take Antonio Brown over Des. Mm -hmm. yes. We both take Julio Jones. And, and, I take and, and, Odell Beckham Jr. Do you? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't. Who else do you take over Des Bryant? I, I say, That's all I'm well, saying. Who else do you take? Because Madden well, takes a lot of other guys. I would guys. say to you DeAndre Hopkins. I would have I, Okay, Des, I'll, I'll, I'll even go with that. Who else? Let me just add that. Okay, five. That's okay, too. But Fitzgerald, no. Alshon Jeffrey, no. Larry Fitzgerald at 109 receptions last year, career high. So he's coming off exactly. a tremendous year. Do you want Larry Fitzgerald or Des Bryant? No, I'm going, I'm going with the man. Just I'm going with the right. man, Des okay. Bryant, but wait a minute. Fitzgerald is one of my all-time favorites, the greatest hand, you know, all since I'm saying Carter, you, but... Yeah, yeah, but respect where they're coming from with Larry. All the other names you threw out, I got it. Yep. But respect where they're coming from with Larry Fitzgerald. 109 receptions, moving to the slot, playing with Carson I'm Palmer, not arguing Floyd that Brown. doesn't That's have value. Saying. I prefaced it, but not as much value as Des Bryant. And Demarius Thomas or Des Bryant? I'm saying you don't know. Demarius Thomas no, no, or Des no, no, Bryant? No. Not after last year. I'm not going with Demarius. No, okay. I'm going with Des. Okay, I'm Emmanuel going with Sanders Dez. or Des Bryant? All I know is I'm, na I'm naming every good receiver in the league except for three for sure we have ahead of him. And... Hopkins, arguably, but but, but that puts him in the top five, not, tier one. But you're not giving me individuals and imagining them playing with Romo behind that offensive line and running game. You're just looking at their production. I'm saying no, put them no, in no. the same situation okay, as you would put Dez and saying, tell me what they I'm would do. I'm saying regardless, just, right. just take away the offensive line and all other variables. Do you want Dez Bryant on your team or Larry Fitzgerald today? Who do you want? Take eliminate variables. The answer is Des Bryant. Let me help you out with for that. For one five. season or for yes. the rest of your career? For, for right now, season? who do you want? Well, at five. At five. Dez five. At five. Right. And they have him lower.